presentation for today about the rebel city contesting deconstructualized capitalism, urban contest contentions, and dog work strike in Hong Kong in 2013 from Leung Hong Shu of the Department of Sociology here in the Hong Kong Baptist University. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, let me thank Vincent for organizing this workshop because it gave me the opportunity to share with you a new project of mine. Um, <clears throat> this is something that I just start working on. So a lot of things are well, very rudimentary. Okay, it's, there are a lot of gaps in my thinking. So bear with me. Okay, and certainly, <clears throat> well, welcome your your comments and advice. Uh. Now it seems we are now talking about a very different group of of people, dog, dog workers, but well, as you will find out later, students also involved, okay, in this strike, okay, which happened just earlier this year in, in Hong Kong. Uh, this is a, the cover of a book, okay, I just discovered, okay, in the new archival section of our library. Uh, and it is the picture of a container pot. I, I look through the, the book, I try to find out where the container pot is. And I, I couldn't. It's probably because I didn't do it well thoroughly enough. But I suspect that it's probably the point that we don't have to know where the pot is, because the pot is, well, the pot can be anywhere, okay, in, in the world. I mean, it's precisely why they, they put this picture as a cover of a book on go, go, globalization, because I mean, container pots. Well, it's not only the kind of technology which makes possible the extension of production networks, okay? It's also, well, in a way, a very visible symbol of um, standardization and mobility, which the presumed characteristic of well, globalization. Actually, there's a recent article which argue that, okay, uh, quantization, okay, would lead to, well, just to put the argument in a very, you know, very <coughs> a rudimentary way, okay, would lead to standardization, and which would leads to decontextualization, de okay? Which means that, well, with this standardization and decontextualization, capital can be free from ties with specific places and labor supplies. Uh, well, I have my doubts, okay? I certainly think that it is an over-exaggeration. My responses are, okay, have context, okay? Places in which, there's places in which global networks are embedded really lost the significance and can see this, okay, as sites of encounters and encounters and grounds of identities contest the power of mobile capital. Um, well, there's, there's a rich literature on, on these issues, and I just start reading on it, okay? So I'm not actually very good on those literature. And what made me interest in this issue is actually the dog worker strike. So let me start with the dog worker strike, the story first, and then we we'll go back to the literature and can hear your actual advice, okay? And, Show me the way forward. Uh, this is <coughs> a picture from, from above for, on the question container parts. Uh, this is uh, the container terminals controlled by, operated by HIT, Hutchison International Terminal. That's where the strikes okay, took place. And this is Hong Kong Island. And this is Central, the Central Business District of Hong Kong. And this is Kowloon. And we are about here. OK, that's Patrick Joyce is about here. From this picture, OK, we can see that while the port is clearly separate, OK, from the surrounding buildings, all these are residential buildings, OK, it's still very much part of the city. Actually, you, you look at the map, it's very much like the center of the city, center of Hong Kong, because the rest of the ship, OK, of the center of gravity. So this is port right at the center of Hong Kong. Now, I argue that this location is actually significant. Okay, but this, is, this urban location allows the ports to, to operate the way it does, okay, with its well, long working hours, with casualized employment relationships. Okay. It also, its location also affects okay, the protest against its operations can, can develop, as, uh, as we will see later. Now, this is a closer look at the container terminal. Okay, this, uh, HIT, this is logo HIT, and this Queens, okay, a uh, key group of striking workers are, okay, uh, drivers of this huge Queens. And 
Now, when we look at the port, okay, we have to bear in mind that this port is part of global networks, okay, not only in terms of shipment of, of cargoes, okay, but also in terms of ownership. Now, HIT operator terminals, or Hong Kong International Terminals, okay, is controlled by Hutchison Port Holdings. Hutchison Port Holdings is one of the leading global operator of, of ports, okay, it has ports all over the world in all the different continents. And just in, okay, the real Pearl River Delta, just in the surrounding region. Okay, Hutchison Port Holdings control the port in Hong Kong, and then there's a port in Shenzhen, and there's a port in Zhuhai, and there's a port near Guangzhou. So one argument against the strike, okay, is that, well, the workers can never win, because well, Hutchison Port Holdings can simply divert all the shipment to other ports okay, in the area. So the strike will only contribute to the decline of the port in Hong Kong. And we can also see from this picture that, okay, the striking workers, the dock workers, they're taking on a very powerful foe. It's no, I mean, small enemy, okay. It, now, let's trace the key events, okay, of, of this strike. Now, it started on March 28th this year. Uh, the outsourced workers of HIT. Now, HIT has two types of workers. Uh, the majority, okay, are directly employed by HIT, and then there's a minority, like I forgot the exact like one and third, okay, are hired by contractors. Okay, they're con not considered okay employees of HIT, but okay, they work okay almost the whole day, actually, 24 hours a shift, okay, <clears throat> in the the port controlled by HIT. These workers, okay, their employment conditions, their pay are inferior to the directly employed workers. And actually, part of the reason that IT will just switch more workers to this indirect type of employment is that, well, you want to strengthen the control of, over, of these workers. And in the past, some directly employed workers went on the strike. So uh, what HIT did is to increase the number of workers that are employed full contractors. Okay, although these contractors are in many ways can be connected actually with HRD, some are run by the ex, ex employees and, and so forth. Okay, they, these outsourced workers, they went on strike at over pay and also very poor working conditions, long working hours, uh, unhygienic working conditions, uh, very dangerous working co conditions, they, and they protest in the, in the terminal. Uh, on March 29th, more than 200 workers, and they're joined by student supporters. Okay, not organized by any university, but organized by the students themselves, okay? Uh, and they occupy one of the terminal, terminal number six, okay? And on March 30th, okay, civic groups, so, so groups in Hong Kong, political parties and other sympathetic citizens, okay, in Hong Kong, went to the terminal to show support to the striking workers, okay? Uh, more than 600 people gathered in the evening, and a strike fund, okay, was set up. Now, the strike fund is important because uh, it, attract a lot of donations. And it's one of the reasons that the, the strike can, can last so long, okay? When the student, when the workers went on strike, okay, they will be without pay. But how can they, wait, hold on? Well, it's because, okay, they can get well, at least some money, okay, from, from the strike fund, so they can at least have some money for, for, for their families, okay? So strike fund is uh, one <coughs> important development. Now, on April 1st, HIT obtained an injunction from the court against striking workers' entry into the terminals. Okay, they say that a lot of people, not just workers, but also old people, young people, they say uh, <coughs> some children, they, they enter into our terminals, it's very dangerous, so they got an injunction from the court. <coughs> and Hong Kong people, okay, even striking workers, uh, they're very law abiding. So after the injunction from issued by, by the court, workers and their Supporters leave, okay, they, they left the, the, the terminals and they, they went camping, okay, on the street just outside the, the, same, the terminal. They set up a well, village there, okay, for well, to receive visitors. Uh, on April 4th, uh, negotiation broke out by the Labour government, the Labour Department of Hong Kong, okay, the, the Hong government failed. As HIT refused to join the negotiation, it came to, oh, they, those are not my employees, why? I have no business there in, 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 in the negotiation, so, so it just refused to join. And only one contractor, okay, show up in, in a, in a, in a planned meeting, okay? And a group of strike supporters, a group, so they, they organize themselves into a sort of, okay, uh, the group behind us, they call it Hao Wun Wu, it's a 
the behind support group okay, of the, of the so again, what is the advocate a boycott of a supermarket chain, okay, parking shop, okay, owned by Hutchison Huang Park. That's the corporation that controls, okay, HIT. So <coughs> citizens get involved. Now, these are some of the related pictures. So these are so workers and supporters protesting, okay, in the container terminal. And this another picture, okay, of them protesting. Now the placard here says uh, support. We, I can support the casting, okay, but I can not support my family, okay. Uh, boss did return my money, okay. Reasonable, okay. Pay increase. Now this picture so <coughs> social workers and social work students. So we went to the the village or the, the camps of the striking workers just outside the terminal to to show that that the support. Okay. The banner said support. Dog workers, <coughs> well, keep your wise boys, just keep your livelihood, and well, keep your dignity. Now, well, on April, we'll continue the story. On April 7, okay, workers, their families, and supporters march from an urban park, this Victoria Park in uh, Causeway Bay, across main shopping streets in Causeway Bay, Wan Chai Central to Chang Kong Center, okay, the headquarters of Chang Kong Holdings in Central, okay. Shouting, Boss Lee returned the money in reference to Lee ka okay, the chairman of Hutchison Huang Pao and Chang Kong Holdings, okay. And then moved, they moved to the government headquarters. We urged the government to intervene more actively in the strike. The union that organized the march came that 400 people had joined the march, okay, and police estimated the figure to be 2,800. Now, these are some of the pictures of strike. Now, street demonstration, Hong Kong style, okay, is a family event. You bring your children along. And so uh, it's probably a, a worker holding his, his, his boy, okay? And the boy is holding a, a pamphlet, that, and this is the face of uh, Li Ka Sing, okay, the, the chairman of Hutchison Wong Bao. And this is the face of uh, a manager of uh, HIT. And what's said here is well, limitless exploitation of uh, product of labor. And all the citizens of Hong Kong, the, the word to is Siman, it's city people. All the citizens of Hong Kong is angry, are angry. Okay. Now this is another picture of, of the march. Okay. Now again, we, we see their faces. Now the uh, the faces of Li Ka Sheng and the Li faces of the, the manager of HIT, and the words here is like a boundless grid. Okay, series of lies. Okay, and these two different Chinese words are monsters. Okay, and this is uh, in central Hong Kong. Now we follow the story. Now, after another failed negotiation, striking workers moved their camp from outside the family to the street outside Chang Kong Center, okay, in the central district, business district of Hong Kong. And on April 8th, 18th, okay, students showed their support. They marched in what I call coordinated steps. In Chinese, the name is called Fu Wang or Ku Xing. Uh, literally, it means hard work. Okay, something they they learn from Korean protesters. Okay, who protest in Hong Kong against WTO in 2005, and then the repertoire is picked up by protesters against the building of the high-speed rail in Hong Kong in 2009. But there's a difference between the the well, the, the hard work in 2009 and 2005. In 2009, the, the workers they nailed on the ground, okay, to indicate their connection with the earth. But now. The workers, the students, okay, they walk upright, okay, to think about the dignity of workers because they talk with the workers and ask them, well, do you think that well, hard work is a good good idea? The workers say, well, well, I'll, well, we, we appreciate that, but don't nail, okay. We workers, we have our pride, we don't nail, okay. That's so they, they so that their their, their pride, so they just walk, okay, and it's a very long walk, okay, from central, okay, to the container terminals, okay, to show their support for the strike. And an evening, okay, on 18 April 19th, an evening rally was held outside Chang Kong Center. And then another boycott was caused against all the shops. So there's a lot of chain stores, okay, and covering almost every areas of life in Hong Kong that's owned by Hutchison, Huang Pao, and Chang Kong. Okay, so boycott was called against them. The boycott is not that successful, I, I have to say. But it just, okay, signifies, indicates people's 
sentiments against okay the monopoly okay of the well, Lee family okay and and also their well greed okay their ruthless uh, labor <coughs> and boring tactics okay and then it's able on April 21 21st workers and their families protest okay they visit okay the Lee family they protest outside of the residence of the car saying, okay, sending balloons to the air and uh, to, to give Grandpa Leah a visit. Uh, these are the pictures. Okay, there's a worker setting up camp outside Chang Kong Center, and the, the face of Lee Kaising again, okay, is so prominently, okay, in the camp. Okay. Now these are the workers marching, okay, on the city streets in Hong Kong. This is Hong Kong Island because from the tram, the streetcar here. And what it says is, is support the strike. And what it says on the headband is not a slave. Okay, and they're holding red roses, marching in, in line in coordinated steps. Okay. Now this is the evening rally by the Chang Kong Center. Okay, what here says on the same ocean. Now in a while, okay, it's, it's an occasion for people to make a corrective statement. So this, I think it's a worker, so they make a corrective statement through the t-shirts, okay? The Chinese characters mean, here mean, for dignity, we will support it to the end. And when you move the camp to the Chang Kong Center, okay, uh, people can come to visit very easily. So high school workers also come, okay? These are a group of high school workers showing their support, okay, to the striking workers. Now on April 21st, the managing director of Hutchison Park, Wang Paul, Mr. Fogg, Mr. Fogg, okay, he spoke to the media, okay, he, and this kind of responsibility of his company for the employment condition of the workers hired by contract inspector. He also said they're actually doing quite well, and he also criticized the leader, okay, uh, <coughs> of the the strike, okay, especially Li Chek Yan here, okay. And on April 26th, okay, Hutchison Wang Paul placed S on all the, all the major newspapers in Hong Kong to criticize the wage demands of workers as excessive. Uh, and Li Chak-yan, legislator and secretary general of the Confederation of Trade Unions, who lead the, the organized the strike for launching what they call a car struggle. Okay, it's, 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 it's actually a, a banner, okay, which the students have okay, in, in the terminal, uh, which have four Chinese words on it, which means car struggle. So it, is, it was picked up on by Wang Po, uh, Hutchison Wang Po, that or the now the striking workers are launching a caste struggle in Hong Kong. And caste struggle is something that's terrifying in Hong Kong, and horrifying most people in Hong Kong. And that's why it's a, uh, something that, well, the supporters of uh, Hutchison Huang Po pick upon. Uh, on May 3rd, after meeting with the contractors, HIT, okay, this place came that it's not, okay, related, okay, in, <coughs> to the employment conditions of the Dot workers offer a pay increase of 9.8% to all outsourced workers. Well, after some twists and turns on May 6th, the contractor signed a statement to the Labor Department. They didn't sign a statement to the unions. They signed a statement, okay, they issued a statement to the Labor Department, okay, confirming that they will give a pay increase of 9.8%. And they also promised that there will be improvement in the working conditions and there will be low retaliation, okay, against the striking workers. Uh, after a meeting, okay, the workers the striking works are pretty ended industrial action. Okay, so the, the strike end on May 6th, okay. Now these are some pictures, okay, supporters of the strike put put on the web. Okay. <clears throat> um, when you have interest in looking at them, you can search for, I think, horse paper, okay, and you can see this uh, graphics, okay, prepared by supporters of the, the workers. And, and this graphics will show us okay, some of the EUs who are involved and give us a better understanding of the, of the structure. Okay, this is uh, on the 15 death checks for, for dog workers. Okay, it's about okay, working conditions of workers, about okay, accidents that can happen okay, in, in, in the terminal, okay, all, all these threats to the, the safety of the workers. And the 15 thefts, okay, this is interesting, yes. No time for family, death by loneliness. Okay, there's a 15 fact, okay, <laughs> to the <laughs> safety of, of, of workers. Okay, and this. And this poster says we are all, okay, uh, dog workers. 
and all these small pictures of uh, people in different occupations so in a banner saying they will support the uh, dog workers. Now there's a picture showing the donations okay, that have been given to the striking workers. Okay, there are donations from unions overseas, from the United States, from Canada, from Australia. But the bulk of the donation actually come from <coughs> Hong Kong citizens. Okay, it was first a hawk. Hong Kong seamen, that's Hong Kong city people, the citizens of Hong Kong is more than seven million. Okay, Hong Kong dollars is a very well remarkable amount because this is a large sum well, historically, a very probably the largest amount of donations striking workers have ever received. Now there's a breakdown of the donation by a month. Okay, one person donated more than ten thousand, no, one hundred thousand, sorry, one hundred thousand Hong Kong Hong Kong dollars. And more than well, five thousand sixty six people could make a small donation be be no ten ten thousand Hong Kong. So it's like almost six thousand people make 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 donations, okay, to the striking workers. Okay, that's one as I said the one reason that the, the strike can, can last so long is because of the support, okay. Uh, from Hong Kong citizens, at least food donations. And this is a picture which describes the end result of the strike. Okay, it's called well, low collective bargaining, just a half glass. So the, how the unions see the, 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 the unions, okay, the conclusion of the strike is this uh, half class victory, they call it. Okay, if that's the proposal before the strike, okay, only 5% salary increase for two types of workers. And during the negotiation, okay, uh, two types of workers, okay, get 5% salary increase and that's 2% uh, more of, of bonus, okay. But the final settlement is that all workers, okay, will get a 9.8% of salary increase. In this sense, it's a, a victory. But the contractors, okay, refuse to negotiate directly, okay, to, to, the, to the unions, okay. They just give a statement, okay, to to the <clears throat> to the government, oh, in, in in this sense, okay, the strike is not successful. If the <coughs> uh, most important demand is actually collective bargaining. Now, well, after telling the stories, okay, the task before me, okay, is to make sense of the story, okay. So I look for the literature, and one source of inspiration is from David Harvey. As you can tell from the name, Rebel City is well boring for Rebel Cities. So what does Rebel David Harvey said in Rebel City? He says the effects of secondary forms of exploitation organized by merchants, landlords. You can read Lee Kassing here, and the financiers. Okay, there's Lee Kassing's friends in the banks. Okay, are primarily felt in the living space. Uh, so. What Li Ka-sing did, okay, or what Li Ka-sing's, well, employees did, okay, what his managers did, okay, in the dock is something that most Hong Kong people, okay, do not know too much, okay, they, they, they heard stories about it now, okay, because, well, students and other people, okay, publicize all these, okay, terrible stories, okay, about working conditions, Okay, in the dock. It's not just students, the, the workers themselves, they set up a, a Facebook page, okay, on, on their working conditions. That's uh, one reason that they can gain, gain sympathy from the general public in, in Hong Kong. But, okay, there's something everyone share is that, okay, we suffer from, well, the, what in Hong Kong is called the hegemony of tycoons like Li Ka Sheng, okay, he controlled a major public utility, okay, the Hong Kong electric power, uh, he controlled uh, chain stores that sell us groceries, electronic products, uh, drug products, and, and, and so forth. Okay, uh, the cars. So, and of course, okay, it's one of the major property developers in, in Hong Kong. So it's where people, okay, the, this is secondary forms of exploitation, it's where people in Hong Kong can most easily find common cause, rather than, okay, of course, uh, there are a lot of people also suffering from long working hours in Hong Kong. There's something that they can feel very sympathetic about, but, well, Li ka as the property di developer who control all these chain stores, okay, he, as someone who get rich at the expense of us, is something that ev almost everyone in Hong Kong can understand. And the further point is the cities where the wealthy are vulnerable not necessarily as persons, but in terms of the value of access they control. 
Now, Li Ka-sing and his senior managers are definitely under no physical danger, okay, in, in, as a person, but the character are criticized, okay, under very public assaults, okay, or insults, okay, uh, openly in Hong Kong, but because of this strikes, because of this, this marches. And further upon by Harvey's class rebellion can be organized for solidarity based in common citizenship, and, and I argue that's what we are seeing now in, in, in this case. Okay, there's a class rebellion, but it's also organized for solidarity based in common citizenship, based on a common identities of, okay, we are the people of Hong Kong, we want a city that, well, we can be proud of. And a city that, well, with uh, container terminals in which workers work there like slaves, is not something that we can be proud of. So there's a citizenship that drives, okay, there's public support to the strike of the dot workers. And a source of inspiration is, well, Seska Sessa, okay. Sessa says the, the localization of strategic components of globalization in cities means that, okay, the idea of global city, okay, means that the disadvantage can engage new forms of contesting globalized corporate power. Now, I think the strike, the, the worker strike is one of these new forms of contesting globalized work, corporate power. Okay? They tried workplace struggle before, okay, workers, but it's not that successful. But this time, okay, so they moved their struggle to, to the city as seems to have achieved a better result. And because the street is a space where new forms of the social can, and political can be made, okay, that's so actually emphasized made. So, well, it's not inevitable that there will be new forms of the social and political on the street. But street okay, provides a space where people can make new forms of the social and political. And I would argue that's what we are seeing now in, in Hong Kong. And the context of street is the city. The city is a space where the powerless okay, can make history. Becoming present, visible to each other can alter the character of powerlessness. Okay, the city is all, <coughs> all for the opportunity for the power, okay, no, for the powerless, okay. To, to be seen and see each other. And that's by seeing each other and to be seen, well, the character, certain argument, or the powerlessness change, which means that they can do something, okay, even if they still are powerless in a way. Now, the few scholars, okay, who look more closely on the relationship between urban contentions, like, uh, well, urban conditions and social contentions, and Two points they make, I think, are very important. They, they argue that cities big contention because they produce a variety of grievances among its inhabitants and offer opportunities for developing ties, okay, both strong ties and weak ties, okay, because you saw it, you know what I mean, okay, be between approximate activists, okay, and students of movement argue that these ties are very important for the sustenance, okay, of, of social movements, okay, so women can, can go dormant, okay, for a certain period of time. But as long as these ties exist, okay, when certain issues occur, you see the movements, okay, right, right, rise up again. And radical change occurs when movement participants, okay, can forge ties between different sectors, scales, and places. And I would argue that's what we are seeing, okay, in this chat, just this participant. They work from different sectors, they work on issues at different scale from different places. They can somehow okay, forge ties, can somehow work together in the protest against well, the richest men of Hong Kong. So if we go back to my first two questions, I mean, the short answers are no, they have not lost the significance. The context are, are, are still significant. And of course, cities, okay, uh, I would argue they can contest with the power of mobile capital, as I've said before. Uh, going back to the case in relation to the, the strike, I would argue that, okay, the dot worker strike, okay, has to be seen in the context of Hong Kong as a, quote, unquote, rebel city. Now, I hesitate a lot, okay, when I call Hong Kong a rebel city, because in many ways, Hong Kong is a very conservative place. And I've told you that, well, the citizens in Hong Kong are very law-abiding. Okay, it's probably one of the most law-abiding city, okay, in the world. Okay, even when they go on protest, when they go on strike, they they obey the laws. Okay, but I would argue that, okay, given that, okay, um, well, given the well, Hong Kong's people is <coughs> um, law-abiding tendencies. Okay, we can sense 
important currents, or maybe undercurrents, okay, that lead to challenges to the status quo of Hong Kong as a, well, economic city, okay, as a city that focuses on the making of money, of course. Uh, what is currents? One is the growth of social movement unionism, okay. Um, the dog worker strike is only the latest, okay, in, in combining work stop, stoppage with street contentions. The, before that, there's the Iron Bender strike in 2007. And the earliest I can remember is actually the strike by um, the flight attendants of Cafe Pacific, okay, in the 1990s. And the flight attendants, okay, is one group that go visit, okay, the stop <coughs> workers, okay, in, in, in the terminal. And normally, they don't, you don't see a lot of connection between the two group, okay, the dog workers, those middle-aged men and the, well, good-looking flight attendants, okay, you know what I mean. <laughs> well, pretty young men and young women. <laughs> um, but anyway, but they, they, in this, okay, strategy, they, they found a common cause. And the other current is urban social movements in, con in quest of participation in urban changes, okay, in Hong Kong. Um, they become very visible in Hong Kong, okay, after the protest against the demolition, okay, of the Star Ferry and the Queen's Pier in 2006 and 2007. Okay, I would argue this actually the, the first, okay, occupied central in, in Hong Kong in 2007. Um, now back to the, the strike. Okay, the Dark Empire. That's what the students, they call the, the con container terminals in, in, in there. Well, criticism I, I, against okay, the highest operator, okay, of it's an affront, okay, to identify Hong Kong as an advanced city, okay, we are advanced city, but well, the working condition, the continual terminals, is something that may come from the 19th century, maybe, okay, so it's just something Hong Kong people should not accept, and it's also another sign of domination of Hong Kong by well, greedy, poverty tycoons, and this another development, okay. Which is, I think, is also important. Actually, one criticism, Li, Li Chiang, okay, was seen as the leader, okay, uh, of the strike, okay. It says that what he's trying to do is a P run of Occupy Central. So because uh, just a little bit before the, the, the strike, uh, a group of democracy, <coughs> democracy activists announced a plan to Occupy Central, to occupy the center of Hong Kong, okay, if the Political reforms in Hong Kong that's going to be announced that just announced today. Okay, uh, what well, the consultation just announced today. Okay, will not meet international standards, whatever it is called. So, but camping outside Hong Kong Center, the workers actually concretized the threat that the city center of Hong Kong can be occupied by protesters. So, one guess that why, okay, in a way, uh, HIT eventually gave into the, you know, and make, made some concessions to the workers' demand is that they're under pressure from either the central government or maybe uh, Li Ka Sing himself. Okay, and why, well, why people say the central government will give pressure to Li Ka Sing, so Li Ka Sing will give pressure to, to HIT is because the central government doesn't want, okay, that this occupation, or this P1 of occupation of central to continue. All right, I think I'll end my presentation here. Uh, the dog workers, okay, um, from Australia, from I think Netherlands, maybe from the United States, I forgot, okay, or, or, or came to support, okay, so they come physically to, to Hong Kong, okay, uh, they, they hold banners, they show up in, in demonstration, to, 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 and they, of course, they had to donate the money to, to, to show the, the support to the, to the dog workers. So this international networks of workers is very much, I mean, behind, okay, this, this drive by, by the uh, dog workers in, in, in Hong Kong. But I would argue that the, the most effective tactic is still, okay, the, the urban protest. Thank you very much. Uh, 
Uh, just a couple of comments, I guess. One, mm. picking up on Stefan, it's actually very remarkable, I think, that dock workers are among the most militant of workers, because the whole promise of globalization and containerization was to get rid of militant dock workers. Right? And that's one of the reasons for it. And, and so the second comment related to that is if you're not familiar with it, you might want to um, grab the work of Andrew Herod, who uh, has written specifically about dock workers at the moment of containerization right. and the transforming geography of global capitalism. But his argument is about the ways <coughs> in which workers directly shape the geography of uh, global capitalism using dock workers uh, and longshore workers as, as um, as his examples, and uh, out of that developed what he calls a labor geography. Kind of understand and then the third comment is, one of the things that strikes me as remarkable in this is that I think, my guess is, from just listening to you and not knowing much else about it, but the strike would have taken a different um, track. It would have unfolded differently if the court injunction had not been asked for by HIT and the subcontractors and so the occupation remained on the dock, right, and not in the city. And so I think, you know, maybe it's a big strategic blunder, if you're looking at it from a capitalist perspective, a big strategic blunder in uh, seeking to push the strikers off the dock and into the city. Uh, maybe, actually, the workers move first, okay, to the switches outside the terminals. That's the direct result of the injunction. But, but of course, once they move outside the dock, then they, they can start thinking, where, where, where should we camp, OK? And we don't have to stay, OK? Just, just outside the dock, we can move to the city center and protest. Actually, the HIT might start this science Hong Kong. OK, uh, attempt another conjunction. It's against entry into Hong Kong center. The court ruled that, okay, the street outside Hong Kong Center is public space, so the workers can stay there. I think that's a very important decision about the judge. First, Lisa. <laughs> A strike just took place in one port controlled by HIT uh, in Shenzhen, I think, like a month ago. And it's successful. The, the company quickly made me concession. Uh, I, I don't understand why, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not looked into it yet. But the strike ended very fast, and the company, HIT, made me concession to the striking workers. struck me uh, particularly was um, actually parallel to what we talked about the Gezi protest yesterday was the e economy of attention. It's like when we were looking at Gezi, we also uh, realized that because of the very location of the Taksim Square as the like main entertainment and the political action scene of the city, actually the entire country, uh, it got a lot of attention and the police had to restrain its violence and directed to places that were out of the you know, purview of the uh, media mm -hmm. and the activists. Uh, I think it, it, in that sense, uh, there is a similarity here. 
making things visible by moving them from the port to the city center, as, as Don pointed out, made a big difference. And I think the other thing that made a big difference was the performative uh, actions of the students, how creatively uh, they kind of utilized uh, that perform protests. And I think that uh, also is something that um, made it possible for uh, the Hong Kong, many Hong Kong citizens to perhaps identify with the plight of the students. So um, I think that that definitely contributed to the success of the strike. Thanks. Uh, quick question on the, the secondary exploitation. Mm -hmm. think, has there been any empirical evidence that Li ka increased prices in order to get his cut back on the wages? You, you mentioned a little bit about, you know, that Li ka might or had, I, I'm not sure which one it was, increased prices just in order, you know, to get his cut back. And does he have that much power? I mean, you know, if he increases prices, I know he owns a lot here, but still, would wouldn't he lose out on competition with other companies? Uh, I'm not sure I understand what you mean by cut back. Uh, because he, uh, he, the workers got a 10% salary increase, mm -hmm. right? Now, the theory of the secondary okay. exploitation would be that that 10% goes back to the capitalists in another form. Most of the time, that uh, commodities uh, would be increased that percent, and then you mentioned something that Li Ka-shing okay. was doing something like that. Well, Li Ka-shing can probably, I'm, I'm not sure, okay, uh, shift some of the increase, I mean, some of the cost increase to the shippers, okay, to other capitalists, okay, who have to ship through his ports. Yeah, he can probably do that because, okay, there are other ports, okay, operated by other companies, but Li Ka-shing is like operate the majority of the ports in, in Hong Kong. So it's a uh, definitely has a certain market power, okay, in the human business in Hong Kong. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Um, yeah, it works. Uh, in time. Uh, we are going out again, um, so I would give you 10 minutes to go back to the guest house and then uh, wait outside the guest house. Okay. So see you in 20, 10 minutes. I am um, stop, stop watching either. So 10 minutes only.